functionality on the business application. So the business application vendor has an interest in reducing the license cost paid for the operating system as much as possible, which is of course where open source comes in handy because it's either free or if you get a paid version it tends to be cheaper or could be cheaper. So by supporting open source all around you in the stack, you reduce the possible license cost from these other parts of the stack and increase the amount of money that you can charge. So you see it here moving from the left to the right. The business application can get more of the customer's wallet by reducing the cost of the other components that the, uh, that the customer has to buy. The customer will want some cost savings, of course, but in its own internal return on investment calculations, how where to spend what money, some will go to cost savings, some will then go to more modules from the business application vendor. So by supporting open source uh, everywhere except, of course, for one's own component in the stack, uh, one can, can shift the money around in the stack and make more itself. This plays out from a second perspective as well by making the total bundle of operating system and business application cheaper at the max, you can reach more customers. You're sliding down the demand curve. So the, the lowest price point, of course, for the, is where the, is the license cost for the, or the cost for the operating system plus the cost of development from the business application vendor now, perspective now of the business application. So that is the minimum price point. If you go lower than that as the business application vendor, you lose money. But basically every customer who's willing to pay this much or more uh, is a customer you could pay to. Now because you reduce the cost for the operating system, you're sliding down the demand curve and you can reach more customers at lower profit points. But you can still reach more customers and as long as profit, it's good, it's good money. So you can reach more uh, customers. And okay, and you can also, I don't have it as a slide here, you can also, by supporting open source platforms, you can increase the total size of your addressable market and hence uh, create a larger customer base as well. There's a second dimension before I come to a uh, single vendor open source, which is the labor market. I, don't, I won't say much about the labor market in this general talk right now, However, it does, open source is clearly changing development work, knowledge workers. In the first iteration, it's making life much worse for knowledge workers in high priced countries because open source, because closed source protected high priced American and German engineers, because you needed to get a license to the software first, you needed to go to training. Uh, that cost a lot. So the 15-year-old Sri Lankan kid could not compete with a German engineer because it simply did not have access to the software, uh, uh, some closed source software, and hence it could not uh, be part of a consulting organization that provided services for that closed source software. Now with open source and open source widely available, everyone can look at the software, download it, get free tutorials on the web and start competing. So in the first iteration, the Sri Lankan kid, 15-year-old, can compete with the 40-year-old German engineer on open source projects and as they are consulting for open source projects, implementation services. And as these are, and as open source is becoming more and more prevalent, obviously the comp competition will get much fierce and much worse for the German engineer. However, it does come with a twist. Uh, remember that I said open source is a somewhat Provocative, I said open source is a two-class society. There are regular developers and then there are committers. The committers are the people who have, I'm simplifying, but committers are the people who have the right access to the project. They started the project or they are, they are the key people in the project. They make core design decisions. They determine the direction of the project, what have you. And not everyone can participate in that. You can only join that core of committers if they let you in. And that's reasonable because you wouldn't want anyone to change your code base. You want quality assurance. So it's a good thing. However, it is also a status thing and a power thing. If you're a committer, you run the project. So every open source project 
has this core group of developers who run the project and that is a powerful position and we have seen it in one study that it actually implies higher salaries for the committers or in that study of Apache Software Foundation projects because it means value to an employer. It means many different things. I don't want to dwell too much on it here. At the very least, participation in open source project, that, but that applies to anyone, is a, is a validation of your technical abilities. If you manage to contribute, you kind of get peer certified because some open source projects said this person is a good developer, we accept the contribution, and it's a believable peer certification because the people who accept your contribution really care about the quality of the project. So they only accept it if what you did is really good software. But then if you're a core member of a project and that project is commercially relevant to some potential employer, you get lots of uh, positive benefits from that because you know where the project is going. That may be valuable to the employer. You have visibility with the community of users of the project. That may be valuable for sales and marketing of your employer. You know where it's, I said that, you know where it's headed, so you can make sure the company is early and well aligned with the direction of the open source project. So there are lots of benefits that um, make a developer who is also a committer, a core member of a relevant open source project valuable to an employer. And that turns around, of course, to economic benefits for the developer. Uh, we've seen it in, uh, in uh, higher salary, but also corollaries are like higher job security, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I have a, it's, it's a topic I'm very interested in. Um, I won't dwell on it here too much. Um, let me just summarize the uh, community open source part on some research challenges in particular for public policy making. Um, right now, companies follow the hunches, literally, when they decide on how many resources to put on Linux, for example. There are no good analytical models that determine if you put in so and so many developer resources, this is the financial return you'll get. The consequences, let's take the Eclipse Foundation as an example, consequences is there's a visionary initial company, IBM in that case, that invested a lot. Everyone knows IBM invested, over invested into Eclipse. And then there are the other companies who saw it's valuable, it makes sense, SAP, Oracle, so they are also investing in the Eclipse Foundation, but they're clearly under-investing because they don't know how much they should invest, so they are on the cautious side. This is a real research challenge. We would like to understand what the return on investment in this community um, uh, open source scenario is if you want, uh, as a company, want to invest in shared development uh, of some open source platform. And my hunch is, I'm working with economists here, my hunch is actually that public policy will have to inject here because it may need, we, we might be facing a tragedy of the, a, tra a so-called tragedy of the commons here, then there's some pieces missing that could only be gap, uh, bridged by public funding to get a community open source project going. Well, um, there are related qu questions, but let me move on to the original title, um, Single Vendor Open Source. This really, we really need to change perspective now. Uh, I talked about how volunteers initially came together and then how companies came together to share development costs, but also uh, to find ways of how to make more money not by selling the particular open source project, but uh, by selling complementary goods, other, open, other, so other software or uh, consulting services, what have you. Um, didactically almost, I, I really sometimes think I should take a very different route and say single vendor open source, okay, single vendor open source I define as open source software that is developed by a single company with a clear profit goal. Profit to be made by selling you licenses and related services on that software. Um, Gartner had its own term. Uh, they called it open source under the patronage of a single firm. It's a bit weaker than saying it's software that's owned. However, according to Gartner Group, uh, by 2012, in that space of money being made on open source software, these single vendor commercial open source firms will make up 50% of 
the money made in that space.